Now, the Lithuanian Prime Minister, Ingrida Shimonita, is in Berlin today for talks with Chancellor Olaf Scholz. They discussed security and defence issues. Lithuania has been one of the strongest supporters of Ukraine since Russia's full-scale invasion two years ago. The Baltic state has said it supports the debate about sending Western troops to Ukraine. Germany has agreed to station a tank brigade of some 5,000 troops permanently in Lithuania as part of NATO defence measures. And I am joined now by Ingrida Shimonita, the Prime Minister of Lithuania. Welcome to DW, Prime Minister. Thank you so much for your time today. What can you tell us about your meeting with Chancellor Scholz? Good afternoon. Most probably I will not surprise anyone very much because we've discussed all the most pending issues, both bilateral, like a permanent brigade of uh, German Bundeswehr in Lithuania and preparations for this, and of course, uh, more global issues, geopolitical issues, like security in Europe and of course, war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Did you urge Chancellor Scholz to send Taurus missiles to Ukraine? <laughs> well, uh, I think uh, this is a very focused debate on one particular uh, sort of weapons. And we've seen, as it was mentioned, uh, quite similar debates about other sorts of, uh, of weapons in the past. So uh, I do not think I, I want really very much to comment on that. I uh, do hear what Chancellor is saying. Uh, but uh, my point is that I think our problem is that we are very predictable to Russia and Putin because we constantly say to him what we are not going to do. And, uh, and we impose uh, red lines to ourselves. These are self-imposed red lines, but Putin does not have any uh, red lines. And when we speak about uh, not doing something because of fear of escalation, so let's look at the other side, because the other side constantly blah, blah, blahing about, for example, nuclear weapons and, and and, uh, and similar things uh, is absolutely reckless and absolutely not um, in a position to sort of uh, value this uh, self-restrainment of, um, of Ukrainian supporters, of, of countries supporting Ukraine. So, of course, this is for the German uh, government to decide. But, um, but, but I think this is the biggest problem of, of, uh, of the Western allies of Ukraine, that we constantly sort of uh, put ourselves in a, in a situation where we deny that we will do something to, to support Ukraine rather than uh, saying that we must do whatever it takes for Ukraine to win this war. Uh, let me put it this way. Is Germany doing enough to support Ukraine's war against Russian aggression? Well, I must be frank that Germany is doing a lot. I mean, in comparison to other countries, but of course it is a big country, so even if uh, my country is uh, um, providing uh, support of a significant fraction of our GDP, still in, in nominal terms, this is significantly lower than countries who maybe provide lower fraction of GDP, but uh, significantly a high amount in, 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 nominal, in nominal terms. So I think Germany is doing a lot, both bilaterally, but also uh, through EU, uh, through EU uh, structures, I would say, but um, because 25% of anything European Union does is German. And this we need to, uh, to see very clearly. And I think it is very important. But on the other, on the other hand, um, what is even more important is that uh, we understand our end goal. And our end goal is that Ukraine wins this war. And then we must do whatever it takes, whatever victory takes. And this might mean... Uh, and this means, as a matter of fact, to provide even more support, regardless how much support we provide now, because we are not here for any competition who is better friend of Ukraine, who is providing more, more support. We are here for Ukraine to win this war. OK, so more could be done. You have called for bold defence and deterrence decisions to strengthen NATO. Can you tell us what exactly did you mean by that? Well, I think that uh, what is important on, on, uh, for, for us to understand is that Putin is, um, has declared that he is ready, he is prepared for a long-term confrontation with NATO. So there is a political will for confrontation, and then on the other side, of course, there is a need of resources, and 
capability, ability of Russia to rebuild resor resources very much dependent on, on the war in Ukraine. But still the, uh, the mood, the will the, of confrontation is, is, is very clear. And given the uh, imperialistic ambitions and, and global view of Kremlin, that you know Russia has no borders and whatever Russia finds being its territory, it will just claim it as its territory. We see that clearly in Ukraine. Uh, poses immediate danger on, um, on countries uh, in NATO, especially the countries that are bordering, that are bordering uh, Russia and Belarus. So this needs a very clear deterrence and very clear understanding uh, that we, uh, we've missed lots of time uh, of underspending uh, for defense and security. And that's why we have our defense industry that is lagging behind. That's why we need to change this completely. We need to stick to ambitious levels of defense spending. We need to uh, supplement and to, to, to fill in the, uh, the warehouses of our military personnel. We need to have military personnel that is combat ready. And of course, the eastern flank that is at the front line of uh, NATO and, and, and Russia, uh, sort of uh, the, the, the border between NATO and Russia uh, goes through the borders of Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Finland, and some and other mm -hmm. EU and and NATO countries. So we need to be, uh, we need to, to, to show that Article 5 is not only us who trust Article 5, but also Putin should trust Article 5. Mm -hmm. We had mentioned earlier uh, Berlin uh, has agreed to permanently station German troops in Lithuania. Can you tell us how important this German military, military presence uh, will be for your country? I would say it is crucial, and it clearly shows this uh, commitment to deterrence, first and foremost, because our major interest is to be able to deter, so that nobody would even think to test this Article 5. And of course, the brigade in Lithuania is one of the elements of the deterrence, and it's very important, it's crucial. I know that this is an unprecedented step for German government, unprecedented step for Bundeswehr. We respect that very much, and I think this is important that we found this agreement and that we are now in details of preparation, both military and, and civil infrastructure that would be needed. And uh, there is very high uh, percentage of support among Lithuanian society for, for uh, increased German presence um, uh, in Lithuania. I think approximately maybe 90% would find it very good news and very, very important for our security and, and, uh, and deterrence. And that is why uh, the government of Lithuania puts that as top priority um, in, in the list of, uh, of our mm -hmm. investments for the, for the nearest future to uh, ensure that the, uh, the, the circumstances, the, the, um, the infrastructure and, and, and the services for, for the people who, who will serve in Lithuania would be uh, best quality and mm -hmm. that it would be a success story for, for the governments of Germany and Lithuania. Prime Minister, I wanted to ask you about Leonid Folkov, the ally of the late Alexei Navalny, who was attacked earlier this week in Lithuania. Um, President Nauseda blamed Moscow but said no one in Lithuania is afraid of Vladimir Putin. Can I ask, are Russian citizens in Lithuania still safe? Well, you know, you cannot make uh, far-reaching uh, conclusions out of one incident. It is a very unfortunate incident, and of course, I have limited uh, uh, ground to believe that this is an, you know, any sort of criminal activity with no, uh, no Russia uh, behind, behind the scenes. And definitely our institutions are um, now in the, uh, investigating the circumstances, and, and they will be able to, to comment more. But uh, we all know uh, that uh, things like that unfortunately happen, happen also in other countries, sometimes with even more dire consequences. So uh, yes, the, the fact that there are quite many political refugees in Baltic states from Russia, also Belarus, puts an additional burden on, on, on the government and the, uh, the institutions to uh, 
uh, ensure to maximum extent we can the security of, of those people and also the um, internal security, the, the, the trust of our population in, in our police and, and other institutions. Uh, you cannot do this 100% because there is always um, a, a risk that you will be not able to calculate some, some particular, some particular uh, circumstances. Uh, I'm sure that our institutions will be uh, fast and, uh, and good in investigating the details and we will mm -hmm. definitely adopt extra measures for, for uh, f those people to, to feel more secure. But of course, it's always also an, a, a challenge and, and, and a compelling thing for, for the person himself or herself also mm -hmm. to, to take care of his or her uh, personal security. Looking at the bigger picture, how worried are you about possible attempts by Russia to destabilize your country? Well, I think uh, this is, you know, not a country-specific issue because uh, sometimes I, I usually get this question and I find it a little bit naive when uh, people think that Russia can destabilize only countries that, is, uh, that are in the neighborhood of Russia. Because what Russia is good at, they are good at taking whatever internal debate a country has. I'm not saying that Russia... Um, initiates whatever internal debate, uh, hot debate is happening in whatever country, but definitely Russia is using it or manipulating or participating in this debate. Let's remember COVID when Russia was playing on, on both sides, pro-vaccination and anti-vaccination and the conspiracy theories and also anti-conspiracy theories. Because what, what Russia needs, what it needed always, it needed this clash in the society because it sort of feeds up the radicals and it feeds up the... Um, the uh, lack of trust or loss of trust in, in government, in institutions, in democracy. But now, in the current moment, Russia has also another interest. It has an interest that countries would be busy in internal debates and have less time for supporting Ukraine. So we should see all those debates with very uh, sort of o with open eyes, because yes, there are issues that we need to sort out as governments of national uh, national governments, as, as also as the EU governments uh, at EU level sometimes, but we must not lose the sight of what is the most important, because if we are stuck in those internal debates for too long, then this, is, uh, this plays into hand of, of, of Kremlin. No surprise that in Kremlin's propaganda, one of the top uh, issues they discuss are farmers protesting across, across Europe. Of course, farmers have their real problems that they want to be addressed, and this is, uh, this is normal in the democratic countries, but we do not, we can not let uh, this internal debate to make us lose sight on what is the most important. Lithuanian Prime Minister Ingrida Shimonita, thank you so much for making time for us today. We appreciate it.